doing what the French call je ne sais quoi. A little bit of, I, I don't know what. <laughs> I've just seen people do this before. This one sounds good. to the store to provision for Easter Island. We have some old oil containers. We washed them out yesterday, soap water and then alcohol to disinfect them. And we let them dry and air out overnight and they're super clean now. So we're gonna fill these up. One with rice, one of these big ones, one with beans, one with flour, and these two with quinoa, was that the deal? Or maybe lentils, quinoa, and popcorn? <laughs> the bare essentials are definitely flour, rice, and beans. Yeah, that's that was a little, my fault. A little overboard. <laughs> that's a lot of popcorn. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's shit living in there. Okay, so we're gonna freeze all this stuff. So this is a big freezer. That's flour, quinoa, and um, popcorn. And Sean's letting us keep it here for two days so it kills all the bugs because there's little bugs crawling around in there. How many are you going to get? Not sure yet, a bunch though. Because we can make ceviche. That, so if we catch a fish like a mahi or a tuna or so, we can last longer. Since we don't have a fridge, we have to worry about that kind of stuff. What are you doing? Shaking maracuya. If they don't move, they're good, apparently. We found the plantains. Lift it up and see how much it weighs. It makes the boat, even that 35 pound anchor makes the boat hobby horse a little much. It makes a difference, anyway. If you put it in here. Is it placebo or no, is it really a, a real difference? It's definitely a difference. You know, a placebo effect is still an effect, yeah? We're taking the chain and the anchor off of the front of the boat to move the weight back as far as we can. Kind of, the more weight you move to the center and down on a catamaran, the, the better. So far, just having started the longest passage in our lives, things uh, feel pretty normal. We've been going up and down the coast of Ecuador quite a lot in the last four months, and we can still see it. We're like just a mile out or half a mile. So everything is pretty normal. Only that we have a bunch of food laying around everywhere. Actually, so much that we both have to carry two of them always. <laughs> it's not that much. I would have expected having more food. We've got like 30 eggs and stuff. It's kind of hard to tell what kind of food you need for three weeks. Biggest challenge so far. 
we had to tag once. We're gonna leave the island far behind on our port side this time. I'm excited. Say goodbye to Ecuador. This is the last piece of land we're gonna see for about three weeks. Woo! Kinda scary, pretty exciting. That's actually Isla Salongo, it's really pretty. And a little bit north of here is Isla Sucre, my favorite spot in Ecuador. Ooh, I gave it away. Day number two, there was, I counted six different obstacles I had to avoid last night. There were four fishermen that came up and told me to move, that I was gonna run over their line, and I needed to alter my course. And then at night, they, they used laser pointers, and they would point it at me, and then they would point it at the, whatever they wanted to, to signal me, and they would go up and down. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out whether this was the net that they were trying to mark or the direction they wanted me to go. So I would like, I would change course and say I'm, I'm altering it to port and they can see my starboard, my starboard green light. And uh, they, then, then they would freak out. And then, so I'd alter to, to starboard and so they could see my port light and they would stop. And then like two minutes later, they'd start freaking out again. Like, no, no, no. So I, I seriously couldn't figure out what the hell they wanted. And so I just went over there and talked to them. Like, what, what are you guys doing? Oh, you need to go this way and go around our nets. Our nets are over here. So they're actually signaling me which way they wanted me to go. We're doing good on food, obviously. We're cruising along at like three and a half or four knots, which is really slow. I'm thinking there's a head current because we should be going a little faster than this just by the wind. How do you like the water maker? Oh my water god. Maker away. That's fucking awesome. Dude, we just took like the best shower ever underway. I mean, it must have been like a two gallon shower, which is unheard of on Zingaro. And I feel like a million dollars. Thank you, Spectrum. Having a water maker is a game changer. I, we would be super, super nervous being out for three fucking weeks with a hundred gallons of water. We probably would have left with like 130 gallons of water because that's all the tanks all the we have. Imagine all the that we would have to walk around. Yeah, just to... 130 gallons weighs pro over a thousand pounds. It's 800 pounds for 100 gallons, so over a thousand. So we have a couple tanks in reserve, just spare. You know, if something happens to the water maker, we can still survive. But uh, imagine having 100 gallons for three weeks. We would be like doing dishes with this little infinitesimal amount and is that a word i think no, i just made that up I, I just made it up <laughs> Fantissimal. it means very small amount but it's in the book and uh <laughs> you're such an idiot baby. <laughs> yeah it's good i like the water maker you're the guy that teaches me english <laughs> it's pretty sorry. inconvenient sorry i know You like it here? I thought as soon as we leave Ecuador, it's gonna be just like this journey for rain and storms and big swells. But so far, it's pretty average sailing. Actually, pretty pretty um, slow average sailing. All right, there's our track. That's Easter Island. It's 1,942 miles away. We're doing about five knots. And this is Navionics. We don't use this to navigate. I'm just using it for reference right now. And it's easier than plugging in the computer. When we get to closer, I'll plug in the computer and... What do you mean closer? In like two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> I can see how it would take 30 days to get... If, if this is how the wind has, is the whole way for a little steel boat, I bet you that thing wasn't going more than three knots ever. Yeah, we've got a friend of ours that left like one, two months ago? Three. Three months ago and it took him a month. And we were, there were like barnacles, like big black ones, really disgusting looking ones, uh, growing on his hull on the way there. That's how slow it was. Well, actually, that's common for all boats. Yeah? Yeah, they're called gooseneck barnacles and they happen below a certain uh, latitude. 
and it's gonna happen to us too, but I'm gonna stop and clean them off. I am so much more comfortable now and more chill this crossing than I was ever, ever. before. Yeah, it's true. I don't have to worry about much. I mean, dude, I've like replaced everything on this boat. The rudders, the dagger boards, the whole rig, the solar panels, the everything. We, we don't have to worry Except about for water. That dingy. <laughs> yeah, very happy. This has been a really good, really good three, a little more than three days so far. Yeah. We're going a little slow most of the time, but every once in a while we get, we shot up to like, you know, eight or nine knots. I think our max speed this whole trip so far has been nine knots, which is not that much for us. No. Um, but. This is a good e traveling speed. It's easy on the rig and it's easy on the boat and it's easy on us. Going fast for a long period of time makes you tired. Yeah. It's kind of harder to cook and it's a little jerky. And I, I just think you don't sleep that well. I okay. honestly think this boat handles better with the double reef main though. I think it's, it's, the speed is the exact same. You don't gain anything with the boat. How is that possible? I think all we need is the, the top half of that sail. We could just cut the bottom off. And then... So, uh, wait a second. Who had that idea the first time we sailed with this? I'm not I'm not really gonna cut my eighteen hundred dollar five baton main crazy. Are you crazy? <laughs> Just saying. If you would listen to me, we wouldn't be going in circles all the time. Since we got rid of our refrigerator, we're eating strictly vegetarian. Uh, I'd like it to be pescatarian, but we can't catch a damn fish. It's been three days and we still don't have a fish. But we saw some jumping today, big tuna or something, maybe marlin, I don't know. We'll catch something. I don't mind being a vegetarian, but we're gonna run out of vegetables soon, that's the problem. Yeah. We'll be a beanatarian very soon. So we just got a call on the radio that said, security, 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 this is the cable vessel Durable, where, where engaged in underwater cable activities and restricted in our ability to maneuver. Please keep a two nautical mile CPA over. So, I'm gonna show you guys what that means. And I think we're gonna call them just to make sure we're good. So here's my AIS section of the radio. That's him right there. That's us with our course up. I'm gonna go to list and go to durable. And so it says, he's five miles away, bearing 305. If that bearing's going down, he's getting closer. Um, TCPA is five minutes, but it's 4.7 CPA. So it looks like by us turning to the south, we are getting to our closest point right now. His speed is only six knots because they're doing submarine cable and his heading is 170. Our speed is eight knots and our heading is one nine zero. So we're gonna come around the front of them. Cable vessel durable, this is sailing vessel Zingaro. This is a cable vessel durable, go ahead. Good morning, Captain. I've altered my course to one eight zero and it looks like I'm gonna have a CPA of Four miles with you. I'm a little faster than you. Just let me know if I'm uh, if I'm getting too close, and I'll come a little bit more to the south. Roger. Yeah, I have you at a little over four miles CPA. That should be plenty of room. Uh, thanks for your cooperation. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Zingaro, stand by one six. Something snapped inside the autopilot. So. So we turned off for this boat right here, and we pinched it pretty hard, and we were doing about 10 knots. And the autopilot couldn't handle it, and it's something broke. So this is not good. We're about 400 miles offshore. It's like the worst place for it to break. I'm hoping it's just a belt, because I got, no, I, got, I got a spare belt, but I don't have a spare drive. I heard, it, I heard it go snap, 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 snap
either all the teeth are broken off of the motor or all, or the belt's broken. This is the problem. The belt broke. It's definitely breaking in different spots though. We need a we need a new wheel for sure. Can I see? See it's cracked there. And it's cracked here. That's why it probably wouldn't come out. I need you to help me. I need you to get me the uh, epoxy and the cabosil. We're gonna cabo this, let it dry. Cabo this and let it dry. So we're, we're just gonna end up drifting here for a few hours while the epoxy's drying, okay? Maybe we should talk to those guys on the boat. Pardon? Maybe we should talk to the guys on the boat. They're fine. 